Question number 17. A curve y equal to x cubed minus 5 is shown on the axis below. This is y equal to x cubed minus 5. Then it says use the graph to find out approximate value of cube root 5. Now if you look at this graph over here, okay, uh, cube root, you can, you can get this when uh, you take the cube root over here. Okay, so to do that, if I bring this 5 this side, okay, so what's going to be, I'll just show you over here. So bring this 5 to that side, so it's going to be x cubed equal to y plus 5. Now, if I take this, okay, if I take this, this uh, y to be 0, let's see what happened. If I take y to be 0, then x is cubed equal to 5. Now I can do, I, I can take cube root, so it's going to be x equal to cube root 5. So that's what I'm going to get, okay. The value of x, because cube root 5 becomes x when y equal to 0. Now I know... Um, uh, that y equal to 0 happens on x-axis because this is x, say that. So it, on x-axis, y equal to 0. So this particular place where this curve intersects the x-axis, this is the place where x equal to square uh, cube root 5. Okay, so this is cube root 5. And then we're going to find out the value of that. This is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can see this is 10. So 1... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1.7. So this value is going to be 1.7. Wherever x is cube root 5. Okay, cube root 5, that's y equal to 0. y equal to 0 happens over here. So, so the curve is giving the value, x is value, 1.7. Now next one, write down the coordinates of the point where the graph crosses. Okay, so graph crosses two particular places. One is over here. Okay, that's, uh, that's, uh, um, uh, uh, no, no, let me, uh, on the, on the axis above, draw this, I have to draw this one, okay, then I have to see that. So, whenever I put x equal to 0, then y equal to 15, so x equal to 0, y equal to 15, right, this point over here, and then when, you can see that, I hope that when x equal to 0, then y becomes 15, okay, and when x, uh, y equal to 0, see that y equal to 0, then we have 5x equal to 15, x equal to 3. So y equal to 0, 3, and that's 0. So what are you going to do? We're going to join this line, uh, these two points, to get a line. Okay, that's my y equal to 15 minus 5x. Okay, now it says write down the coordinates of the point where the graphs cross. So graph crosses right over here, okay. I can see that it's 2.1, so it's 2.1, the x coordinates, 2.1, whatever the y coordinates, this is five. So it's in between one, two, three, four, four and five. So I can take 4.5, okay. So that's the coordinates where this graph uh, crosses, so 2.1. 4.5. You don't need to write down here, but just to show you. Now look at question B3. It says the x coordinates of the point where the graphs cross is a solution of this x is cubed equal to a plus bx. If you look at this, x is cubed, x is cubed equal to a plus bx. It looks similar to that, only if you take the 5 that side. So x is cubed equal to y plus plus 5, something like that, see? So what I'm going to do, I have y equal to x cubed minus 5, since it says two graphs cross, and another graph is and y equal to 15 minus 5x. So y, y same. So I'm going to replace this, this value of y over here. So x cubed minus 5 equal to 15 minus 5x. Okay, now I'm, I'm checking this one, and somehow... I'm going to match this equation with this one. Okay, somehow I'm going to express this one in this form. So x is cubed, I have it here. So if I bring this 15, uh, 5 over here, it's going to be 15 plus 5. See, negative becomes positive, minus 5x. And that's 20 minus 5x. Now compare this, okay? Since I have x is cubed on my left-hand side, x is cubed 
equal to a plus bx. So x is cubed, x is cubed. Now a becomes 20. So put the value of a 20. And over here, x is x. Now b is positive here. here. So b is supposed to be minus 5. Okay. So this one is done. It was a little tricky, but I think you can handle that. Okay. Now question number 18. Okay. Question number 18, the diagram shows the position of a harbor H, that's harbor H, and a lighthouse L. A boat is anchored at B where L, L H B is 108 degree. Given that the bearing of B, bearing of B from H is 125, so bearing the angular distance from north. Find the bearing of L from H, L from H. So L from H, this is the angle they are asking to find out. So this whole thing, and we can see that this is 125 plus 108. So 125 plus 108, that becomes 8 plus 5 is, uh, let, let me just calculate it over here. That's 13 carrying 1, that's 3, and this is 2. So this is 233 degree. So A1 answer is 233 degree. Now H from B h from b whenever it says from i just draw plus sign like that north is this side h from b means this angle we are looking at okay now this angle over here 125 equals to this one 125 because they are alternate interior angles okay so this is 125 and this one we know 180 so this is 180 plus 125 so 180 plus 125 that skips me five 8 uh, plus 2 is 10, carrying 1, 1, 2, 3, so 305 degree, okay? So this A2 is 305 degree. Now next one, at 7.30 a.m., at 7.30 a.m., the boat set sails in a straight line from B, from B to H, from this place to this place, at an average speed, so speed is given, 25 kilometer per hour okay given that bh the distance also given 70 kilometers so distance is given 70 kilometer find the time what is the time at uh, at which the boat reaches the harbor from here to here so if you remember the triangular rule um, distance and st so t is distance is up and speed is down so that's t so we're going to use that formula here so t equal to distance over speed. Distance is given 75 kilometer. Be careful with the unit. It's kilometer, kilometer. So we don't need to worry about anything. 25 kilometer per hour. Okay, so kilometer, kilometer cross out. Hour going to go up. And this is going to be uh, uh, 25. So that's 75. Oh, sorry, 70. I'm sorry. This is 70. Okay, so I can cross out by 5, 5, 5 is a 5, 1 is a 5, then 5, 4 is a 20. So this is going to be 14 by 5. Now 14 by 5 gives me um, 2.48 uh, hour. Okay, so uh, I need to find out because they are asking for find the time. Okay, so 2 hours, 0 0.8 hour. Okay, I'm doing manually because this is not calculator version plus 0 0.8 it can be written as 8 by 10 but hour can be written as 60 minute so that's that's cross out giving me 6 so it's 2 hour 8 4 uh, 8 6 uh, 48 minute now remember uh, the 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 boat leaves at 7:30 so 7:30 and then it takes 2 hour 48 minutes at that now this, if I add it, just simple way to add it, uh, it's going to be 78 and this is going to be 9. But the problem is after 60, if it's more than 60 minutes, that becomes 1 hour. So if you take 60 minutes from here, so it's going to be 18 minutes and 1 hour added over here. So 10, 18. This answer of question B would be 10, 18. That's the answer. Okay. All right, the next question is 19. Uh, every month, a salesman uh, pay is a salesman's uh, pay is made up of a fixed amount plus a bonus. 
the bonus is a percentage of his monthly sales in 2016 the bonus was m percent of his monthly sales the graph shows how the salesman's monthly pay varied with his uh, monthly sales this is a straight line graph okay if we write down y equal to mx plus c this c shows the y intercept okay why you are not supposed to write down here but intercepts i'm just showing you this okay y intercept so this is the y intercept that's fixed okay now use the graph to find out the fixed amount so they are asking to find out this fixed amount the value of c so this is going to be one question nothing to do more but writing down this value right over here the value of m m is this gradient okay so you can take any two values okay i i would love to take this one 3400 that's the value of y x's value is zero take that point because there is a zero in it and then you can go and take 5000 and then this particular place is uh 3600 3600 so the m is going to be difference in y axis by difference in x axis so 3600 minus 3400 and I have taken this one first, so 5,000 minus zero. So it's going to be 200 by 5,000. Okay, but remember it was percentage. So required percentage was, required percentage was M percent. That means 200 divided by 5,000 times 100%. So this, this two zeros cross out. This zero, this zero cross out, and this is going to be four. So it's going to be four percent right here. Okay. Now, in 2007, the fixed amount was uh, 3,500 per month. So it's not this this uh, this uh, graph. So it's going to be somewhere over here, uh, 3,500. Okay. And the monthly bonus was five percent of his monthly sales. In July, his sales was 12,000. Okay, calculate the salesman's pay for July. The, according to the question, required payment. Okay, required payment was, see that this is the fixed price. Okay, that's C. So plus C is 3,500. And this is going to be 5% of this sales, 12,000. So 5 divided by 100 times 12,000 plus three five zero zero cross this two out so this is going to be five zero 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 five to the ten carrying one five on the five and one six plus three five zero zero that's end up uh four thousand one hundred you can you can calculate that three five zero zero and six hundred plus that's going to be zero zero five plus six is eleven carrying one that's four so this is four thousand one hundred okay that's Question number 19. Okay. Question number 20. Okay. ABC and ABC, this line and EFGH. EFGH are parallel lines. So this is parallel, uh, shows parallel line. Okay. And the line DI, this is transversal line, intersect these two lines at B and F. Okay. And then this angle is given. And this two, okay, this is isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle tells me this and this are equal. Write it down, okay, nothing wrong with that. Now you have to find out BFG. Oh, okay, look at this, BFG, this one. We know these two are uh, supplementary. So this is going to BFG gonna be 180 minus 68. That's gonna be 180, 68. I'm just doing it this for you. So that's gonna be crossing our seven. This is 10, so it's two. One one so one hundred twelve degree. Now to FGI F G I this angle. Now sum of these three angles equal to one hundred eighty degree. So this angle is going to be one hundred eighty minus sum of these two, or you can write down two times sixty eight. Okay, so that's going to be sixty eight times two eight to the sixteen carrying one twelve thirteen. So 180 minus 136, that's gonna be four, and that's gonna be four, so 44 degree. This is 44 degree. Now next one is DBA. Uh, where is D? D, B, and A, this angle. 
if you look closely these two are alternate exterior angles so you don't need to do anything this is one one mark so you can write down directly this is 68 degree okay uh, if you don't understand that you can go this to our alternate interior angles or this is corresponding angles you can write down this equals to this and sum of these two is supplementary you can find it that way as well okay now I'm at question number B uh, this is a trapezium PS is a uh, uh, where's PS PS is 5 and Q is this oh isosceles trapezium okay PQ is 16 and this is 10 find the area of the trapezium uh, if you remember the area of the trapezium trapezium the formula is half uh, sum of parallel lines times height so I need this height now since this is a this is an isosceles tr uh, trapezium I know this is 10 this particular place is 10 so this is 16 this is gonna be say 16 minus 10 that's 6 6 divided by 2 equal to 3 the reason is uh, this line and this line has to be equal since this is an isosceles uh, trapezium so if this is 3 this is 90 degree and Pythagoras theorem you know that this is 5 this is 3 that this is very basic one this is, should be 4 if you don't understand that you can find out this this height height equal to this 5 square minus this 3 square that's going to be 25 minus 9 that means the square root 16 equal to 4 you can get this way okay now we, we can use this formula so area of the trapezium half parallel side is 10 and 16 10 plus 16 and height is our 4 so if I cross this on it's 2 then 10 plus 16 is 26 times 2 so it's going to be 52 it's going to be 52 square centimeter okay now we are coming to the factorization now expand and simplify that's a so i have a p minus 5 p plus 4 and you can multiply this way that's probably the easiest way and you are not going to make any mistakes so p square plus 4p minus 5p uh, plus minus minus 20 and when you simplify this it's going to be p square minus p minus 20 so this a is going to be p square minus p minus 20 now b1 b1 4x square plus 12xy plus 9y square uh, this is kind of interesting if I can write down this one 2x whole square and this one is 3y whole square see that this is going to be 9y square and this is going to be 4y square and if I put this thing over here 2x and bring this thing over here 3y all I have to see if this two matches or not 2 2 is a 4 4 3 is a 12 and xy yeah it does so it's in the form of a square plus 2ab plus b square we know that a plus b whole square equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square if we can write from here to here then obviously from here we can come to this so this is going to be a is 2x over here b is 3y plus 3y whole square you can write down this way uh, 2x plus 3y whole square you can you could you could go it this way as well um, that into 2x plus 3y okay either way will do okay but i think this is just a waste of time you can do this one Number two, B2, 3M square minus 48. Take three common. You can see that uh, 48 is a multiple of three. So that's M square minus, this is going to be 16. Don't stop there because 16 is a perfect square. So you can write down M square minus four square. And that's in the format of A square minus B square. And you can write down A plus B, A minus B. The reason is it says factorize completely. If you stop over here, you're gonna lose marks. So it's going to be 3m plus 4m minus 4. So this is going to be 3m plus 4m minus 4. Done. Okay, 22. The equation of the line L is given this. Write down the gradient of the line. So we're going to write down this one in the form of y equal to mx plus c. And this m is our gradient. So 2y equal to x is going to be that way minus 1 so y and the, if i divide it by 2 then it's going to be minus half x minus half so m is m is minus half over here 
find the equation of the line parallel to L, parallel to the, this. So when two lines are parallel, L1 is parallel to L2, we know that M1 equals to M2, okay, and passes through this point. So let's write down that y equal to mx plus c. And we know that the value of x is over here. Value of y is here. So y is 5. And then this is going to be uh, m is this one over here minus half times 0 plus c. This thing becomes 0. So c equal to 5. Now we, can, we are ready to write down the equation. y equal to m is going to be minus half x and c equal to 5. So this equation would be y equal to minus half x plus 5. Okay. Next one. The diagram in the answer space show the line L and the line this one. Gradient is positive. Two lines. This is negative gradient. This is positive gradient. And that's that. And then uh, L. This one, I don't have any equation. Okay. But draw the line. Uh, L doesn't have any equation. It says uh, draw the line y equal to minus 2. Uh, that's pretty easy. y equal to minus 2. Go below over here. So gradient is 0. This is my y equal to minus 2. So it's strong. Now it says shade and level the region are defined by the three inequalities. Greater than y is greater than minus 2. It has to be over this line. Okay, so over this line. It can be this, 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 anything. Okay, now this one is uh, greater than this one as well. Okay, now over here, just um, forget about this. It should be this one. So I have this, 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 this four region. This one, or if you're taking this one, one region, one region, two region, three region. So I can cancel out that. And the last one, okay, 2x plus one. Uh, sorry, I have done that one. I have done that one. Now this one. Now this one, if you write down y, 2y equal to, uh, less than or equal to minus x minus 1. This is negative gradient, so this is the equation of this line. It's less than, so it's supposed to be over here. So when it's sh sh shaded, so this region is over here. Okay, most of you probably shade this region over here, but that's going to be wrong. You can pick any point over here. This is uh, minus 3, 0, and put this equ in, in this equation. Uh, y is 0, 0 is greater than or equal to minus 2. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. So we are okay. And over here, x is minus 3. Then y is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. That's less than or equal to minus 1. This is less than minus 1. That's also okay. And uh, y is 0. So this is 0 is greater than or equal to minus 3 to the 6 plus 5 minus 5. And that's also okay. So we are okay. This is our shaded region. Okay. Now the last one. Okay, the graph shows the cumulative frequency curve for uh, the playing times of the individual tracks of Andrew's MP player. Okay, use the graph to find out the median. Now, median we know exactly in the middle. So, from 0 to 80, so half or 50% of cumulative frequency. That's going to give me half times 80 equal to 40. So, this 40 over here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line till it touch the cumulative frequency graph. It touch right over here. So the question is asking me to find out this value over here, okay? Playing time, right over here. So it's four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to be 4.6 minutes, okay? Then it says the interquartile range. Now interquartile range is, if you remember, that's one, this is two. Interquartile range is Q3, minus q1 okay q3 is going to be um three by four times cumulative frequency that's 80 and this is 20 it's 60 now 60 is going to be intersect the graph at some place over here and i can see that it's uh, somewhere in between five point uh five and uh five one so it's going to be 5.05 and then this is q3 okay and q1 would be 1 by 4 times 80 that's going to be 20 so 20 now this 20 intersect over here and i got this one uh 4.1 right this one 4.1 
so that's minus 4.1 okay so 5.05 4.1 this is zero then then if we subtract this because interquartile range q3 minus q1 this is q3 and this is q1 okay so it's five and that's gonna be nine okay so that's it 0 0.95 minutes okay now last one 23b the table summarizes the playing times of each of the 100 tracks of tom's mp player 100 times so if i add this frequency it should give me 50 uh, 100 100 uh, total okay now it says calculate an estimate of the mean why it says estimate of the mean because this is not fixed we don't know for sure okay playing times for the individual tracks we need to do some of the things since i don't have exact value what i'm gonna do i'm just i'm just gonna draw it over here and then and then i'm gonna find out midpoint of this okay so midpoint of this is going to be my x so it's a 2.5 plus 3.5 divided by 2 that gives me 6 divided by 2 is 3 and over here midpoint is 4 over here is 5 this is uh, 6 okay and this is f to find out mean i need uh, the formula for mean is summation of fx divided by summation of f now this summation of f should be giving me 100 over here just to make sure 50 plus 30 is 80 95 100 so this is 100 okay now i need summation of fx i have x i have f so i'm just gonna extend one more column over here and put that fx so 3 times 5 is 15 4 times 30 is 120 5 times 50 is 250 and 6 times 30 is going to be 90 okay so summation of fx is gonna give me 5 and then 1 3 8 and 9 17 7 carrying 1 uh, 3 4 so 475 okay so this mean would be 475 divided by 100 and that's 4.75 so that's 4.75 minutes okay that's our estimate the mean okay so that was it i hope it was pretty understandable and you enjoyed if you're stuck in any place please uh, go back to that question and see it Okay, if you have any question, leave in the comment box. Okay, thank you. See you in the next video.